Coyote Culture is presented by the Cheyenne River Predator Hunters and TS Customs. Precision firearms built for success. I'm Orrin Lesmeister. You're watching Coyote Culture. that perform when it matters most. The stand prior to this one, we were setting probably a quarter mile away and we could actually see a pair of coyotes on this dog town on the edge of this. Yep, working it down. We didn't even know this dog town was there, actually. Yeah. It's in it's in a neighbor's pasture and it's the first time we were able to get up in there and call it. We actually started making sound and then, well, Bluetooth wasn't working so we had to go pick up that collar and bring it close. And I mean, we did a lot of things oh, it that was a mess. you shouldn't do on a coyote set. We had the coyotes that we had seen coming in, barking behind us, howling and stuff, just kind of you know upset that somebody had come into their territory. We kind of threw everything out there for quite a while. I mean, we were on this set for quite some time. When Dakota spotted this coyote, I actually just slowly turned the camera to the left and, and just laid back down and flipped the viewfinder to where I could see it, zoomed in on him and said, I'm on him whenever you want to take a shot, you know. And yeah, it was, it was pretty lucky to have that coyote come over the hill. But when that coyote come over the hill, we weren't expecting that one to just come charging at us either with all of that going on. It just come up to see what was going on. Culture is brought to you by Swagger. Shoot with confidence. Shoot with Swagger. The bipod with moves. At this point in time, yeah, we we screwed this setup pretty 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 royally. <laughs> 
shot at one and missed it, walked in, sat down, sat the call up, couldn't get the call to work, had to move the call. Sure enough, here he is though. He's sitting out there at 400 and he come up to see what the heck was going on. So, give me an opportunity and what do you do if you give us too long an opportunity? Nice shot, Dakota. Shoot it. Dead coyote. Good job, Dakota. Just under four, about 390. 390. Coyote culture, boy. There's still more coyotes further down They're the creek barking. Challenge Allen barking at us big time behind us. These two here are warning barking, these yep. two we shot at. Yep. That's probably what stopped him. Yeah, right I think it is because when that dog sat down over here that you just shot, all it could do is look over in the creek at the mother dog's warning barking and challenge. Male, he's not so little. Nope. He's probably three or four, probably. <coughs> Before this set, we've seen a couple. We've seen a couple coyotes out in Mousin and coming across this downtown that we didn't even know was here, I guess. We come to get closer to them and we actually walked right in on one of them, about 50 yards. And we got laid down and the camera turned on. And we actually took a shot at him and missed him. Too close rushing. And we decided since we were here, we come up here and we sat down and we made a stand anyway. And we got this guy to come over the hill. So he was just under four, like 390 when I shot him right here. But the second coyote, we didn't shoot at, but we seen it go into the creek and it was warning barking back behind us. So this guy cracked the hill here with that other coyote warning barking and he stopped right here and wasn't gonna come any further. Just come up here to look around and see what was going on. Without being suppressed, you know, we would have probably never ever even got that oh, opportunity no. for another one. No. You know, we, yeah, cause 20 minutes prior to this, 100 yards behind us, we had just taken a shot. So without the suppressors, no, we had never, never got that coyote up to us. One shot, took him down, 20 yep. armor. Yeah. Downed him. I think we can go out up here just a yeah. little we'll ways to more. the next flat yeah. point up there. Make a set. What time is it? Uh, nine o'clock. It's not time for one more. Oh yeah. The plan was, was to go shoot coyotes and then go watch football. football. <laughs> I don't know, we would have had to really be into the coyotes probably to not watch it. Of all days to have to go watch football, we should just keep calling coyotes. It was a NFC, AFC championship uh, weekend and mm -hmm. both of our teams were playing that afternoon. He's a Jaguars fan for some reason. I'm a Vikings fan for whatever reason. I was like 11 years old the last time the Jags were good. <laughs> You're focused at the time every time we'd get back in the side by side or the ranger you know we where can we go next and we got x amount of time mm -hmm. so yeah as much as we were focused on hunting coyotes in the back of our minds it was we needed to get be home at a certain time so yeah it was it was a good day i think i'd pull right down on that bottom i don't know they want to expose that other creek oh though. yeah yeah you're probably right this one that's why we bring you along yeah. the wisdom <laughs> the last set of that day was kind of just a squeeze in set, right? Yeah. We'd actually went back to back to Jim's place. Yep. And then we were like, ah, we could probably do one more one set, can't we? <laughs> Let's go kill a coyote. flat bottom creek it's it's just going to be a quick set um had heard some coyotes there pre previous and uh crawled in over the bank and got set up and dakota started working the call and 
off to her left. Now it comes in, Dakota spots are coming in. And This segment of Coyote Culture is brought to you by TS Customs Precision Firearms, built for success. Nothing better than that, except for coyote culture. That is the coyote culture. That is the coyote culture, yeah. They like a lunchtime called coyotes and then go watch them play football. Perfect. We just about didn't make this set. We just about went back to watch the kickoff of this first AFC Championship playoff game. No lie. Coyote run back here. Right over here to our left? He's going right past the grain bins. There was another one coming in then. Heard the shot. Huh. Oh well, still a good day. There he is. Good thing she gave you that last look back. She looked big when you lifted it up. Big old female. Oh yeah, big old female. Just right. Had coyotes around us all morning. Yep. Um, our last set of the day here, this female here, we were set up in kind of a shallow creek and Dakota warned me that, you know, these coyotes could come from any direction here and we started calling and sure enough, about oh seven, eight minutes into the set, yep. uh, we had a coyote come over the hill to our left, Dakota spotted her and and she came right on in. Uh, the side by side here was actually completely exposed to her the way she came in from an angle and didn't bother her a bit. She was coming to the call and and got her down off the side hill and, yeah, and she knocked never, her down. She never she never turned around until until she seen you move. Seen move move. Yeah. I had to I had to pick up and turn left to get on her and when she seen me move is when she started leaving. Got her got her going out. But anyway, now we're gonna go watch some playoff football. We're going to go watch the AFC and the NFC Championship, and you guys can finish watching some coyote culture. So for, for those of you who may not know what happens after we shoot the coyote, you know, it's, it's not all about just shooting a coyote. At, for bragging rights so uh, from the field to well, my little eight by eight fur shack here this is uh what i like to do what we all do as a, as a coyote hunter or predator hunter you know whether it's bobcats or coyotes and that is skinning the coyote out and bringing them in here and fleshing them and getting them put on the the stretchers and all that is is just prepping them for the fur sale or to sell to local fur buyer and it just helps add value to the coyote and that way ensuring us that we get our money's worth out of them because I mean a typical coyote on the carcass ain't worth much but if you do the little extra work as far as skinning them and fleshing them and getting them put on the board then then it's worth it. So this typical coyote right here you know it's 
if I was to just leave this coyote on the carcass and take it to a fur buyer, that ain't worth it. So us being the coyote hunter, you know, you want to take the time to actually flesh it out and put it up and make it worth its actual value. Because this is, this is what we do. It's kind of a second job for us as far as putting our own furs up and making the extra money off it. It helps pay for ammo and you know good good scope to mount on your gun and and the camel we wear it's it's well worth it it's a little extra work it's kind of hard but it's worth it you gotta love what you do episode of coyote culture lonnie is out riding solo i hear him and it's not not in front of me it's right behind me when a stubborn dog makes him work for it i pick up the camera grab my gun i try sneaking up around this hill and see if i can't spot this coyote i thought it'd be a kind of a slam dunk that's next time on coyote culture